Hi guys, so I've had a few people that have asked me about needle minders, what they're for, how you can use them. So I'm going to use my very limited video skills to talk to you about them. So mine come in little parcels like this. And yeah, I'm doing all of this one handed, so you'll have to excuse my awkwardness. And I sort of look like this. I've just really poorly positioned mine for the fire. So it looks like this. So it's very stuck on. There's the back magnet. So what you do is you slide them on off. Um, you never ever pull this magnet off and then hold it at a distance and let it use the magnetic pull to snap onto that other one. Uh, bad, bad juju. Like, you can hurt yourself. I have actually pinched myself once before. That wasn't very fun. Um, but anyway, so I always use the slide motion. So what are they good for? Well, they're called needle minders and they're used predominantly for needles. So what I've done here is I've just chucked some into my couch and I'm just gonna boop, and it's picked them all up so they're pretty useful for things like that as well if you've dropped some you can sort of swish it over where you've dropped it and it should pick it up and anything else that's magnetic as well so let's move on over to my fabric so this is my fire and ember cell that I'm working on with a number of other ladies. It's the first time I've ever done a cell and it's actually really, really fun. So I'm trying to do this one handed because I'm holding the camera. So oh, I've popped it off there. So I've removed the magnet. And then what I'll do is I'll hold that one on there. And then the loose magnet, I'll slide around to the back and let it find its way. So, pardon the black out while I do that, because that needs a few hands. So you can see that it's just snapped on. So, there she is. And you can slide them around. Um, if you're worried about it fluffing up the fabric, then you can always just detach and move it around as you so choose. So what I also use my needle minders for, aside from looking after the needles, so I've got one in the project and I'm like dum de dum boop looks after it there um, and when you're flipping over so if you use a scroll frame like mine and you're flipping it over and you've just cut off some fabric you can obviously pop the needle on the other side as well so that you don't lose it while you're flipping and turning so it's pretty functional from front or back so what I've got here is my pattern let me just remind myself which way it's meant to go up, otherwise I'll be in dramas when I start stitching again. So I do that. And again, I'm going to be a bit awkward because I've only got one hand. There you go. So I use it both to hold my pattern and to find needles, hold needles. Uh, there is a method called thread parking. I did do a, a brief video. I think I did a couple of them on thread parking and how you do it. Uh, sometimes I throw park, sometimes I don't. It really depends on how I'm handling the project. But so yeah, they're they're the needle minders. If you're keen to check them out, there's my website on the bottom, and come have a look. I do love talking to people. You ask anyone that buys regularly from me, they became customers because I'm. I don't shut up. Uh, I love talking to people, getting to know them, um, answering questions. So if you're ever unsure, hit me up because I'm always happy to do a video, help explain things. Um, so yeah, these are available in my Etsy store. I have to say so far, these little skulls, well they're not really little are they? Um, but these skulls are my favourite needle minders because they're really sizable, like they're massive. So I can hold a lot of needles on them. And they do a really good job of holding my pattern. I just like them. They're big. I like big things. Um, hence the big project too, I suppose. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. And enjoy stitching.